purport. At Tirunakshal's last moment, his mother Diti remembered what, what her husband had said. Although her sons would be demons, they would have the advantage of being killed by the personality of Godhead himself. She remembered this incident by the grace of the Lord, and her breasts flowed blood instead of milk. In many instances we find that when a mother is moved by affection for her sons, milk flows from her breasts. In the case of the demon's mother, the blood could not transform into milk, but it flowed down her breasts as it was. Blood transforms into milk. To drink milk is auspicious, but to drink blood is inauspicious, although they are one and the same thing. This formula is applicable in the case of cow's milk also. Many uh, instructions we can try and learn from this verse and purport by Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is 18,000 verses, so it's a a uh, vast literature, uh, although the Mahabharata is 100,000 verses, so very significant. And we know the Gita is 700 verses. And then there's so many other literatures that uh, are given to us in this human form of life. Upanishads, the Vedanta Sutras, the original four Vedas, which was originally only one Veda, uh, then it was expanded into four Vedas. Uh, we know that the uh, Puranas, there's uh, Puranas for the uh, people in the mode of ignorance, and there's Puranas for the people in the mode of passion, and then those in the mode of goodness. It's a very extensive body of knowledge uh, and uh, combine that with uh, Kali Yuga deficiencies where the memory is very short, our intelligence is limited, our lifespans are limited uh, for the average person in Kali Yuga, uh, conditions are always disturbed. Uh, so, this morning, the reading after Mangalarati, uh, there was some mention of this constant disturbance. So, the, that reading, the uh, recommendation was given to focus on deity worship, because that way the mind gets focused on something uh, which we are more accustomed to. We are accustomed to focusing on people, and the deity is Krishna himself, or Balaram, or Gornitai, or Shrimati Radharani, uh, uh, Krishna, so Prabhupada's deity, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. So, uh, the point is that there's lots of disturbances. It's a very difficult age. Uh, material world is a very difficult place anyway, because this is a prison house, and uh, uh, so prison house is not I was speaking about this on Sunday it's not some, a place that we want to uh, spend a lot of time in hmm? let's say that you were given choices every one of you that you could choose to be in the prison house for as little or as long as you wanted hmm? So how many of you, and the choices were that you could be in prison for no time or one night or one month or one year or one lifetime. So those, those are multiple choice questions, right? So you all you raise your hands. How many of you would like to be in prison for one lifetime? 
Nobody. How many of you would like to be in prison for one year? Good choice. Nobody. How many for one month? How many for one night? Just to experience, just to see what it's like. Would you like to go for one night just to, just to try it out? Nobody wants to go. How, how about you don't want to go to prison at all? Everybody raises their hand. So you don't want to be in prison at all, then why are you here? Why are you here? Why are we all here? We just agreed that none of us want to be in prison, but we are here. So, at least we should be determined to get out. And in the prison there is a certain departure lounge. That departure lounge is called, in your case, is called Shri Shri Radha Krishna Chandra Temple. So that's your departure lounge. If you stay in the departure lounge, then the plane is already there waiting. Hmm? All you have to do is, when they announce the departure, you walk in and go back to Vaikuntha. Hmm? So, uh, the Bhagavatam describes in the 18,000 verses all kinds of different situations for our instruction. And Prabhupada said, that even one verse and one purport we can read for one month. If we had the intelligence, we could discuss these maybe 80 words or so, we could discuss this in the purport for one month. If we had the intelligence to think deeply about these words and ask questions intelligently, then this this translation, then this one verse and this purport with about 80 words I'm just approximating, we can discuss for one month. But we'll find it difficult to do, right? So this is again the unfortunate thing, situation in the age of Kali. So Prabhupada knows our situation very well. He is Krishna's representative with perfect intelligence, perfect guidance coming from him. He is always receiving guidance from Krishna. And he's able to give us the perfect uh, arrangement, taking into account all the situations. He has recommended to us how we can come in this uh, Vaikuntha place, Prabhupada's temples. Uh, we talked about this the other day in the association meeting. This is Prabhupada's temple. Prabhupada is here. He is running it. He is in charge. We are all servants. And along with Prabhupada, Prabhupada has brought many other persons to be here. Who did he bring? He brought the Acharyas. He brought Chila Bhakti Siddhanta. He brought Gornitai. He brought Krishna Bararam. He brought Radha Krishna Chandra. He brought Prahlad Nishinga. He brought Srinivas Govinda and Krishna and Rukmini and Satyabham. So Prabhupada has brought everybody to make sure that uh, we are well taken care of and we can all go back to Godhead right from here. Just have to stay here and cooperate with them. You know, be good prisoners. If you are if good prisoners, then you will get your uh, boarding pass. And you will have good seat assignment also. It will be a very pleasant flight back. So, he has given this uh, purport and he has given us the formula, the perfect formula. Hmm? Morning, Mangalarti, you are rising, all of you. And then there is uh, Tulsi Puja. And then we go down to the temples with Prahlad Nishinga and Srinivas Govinda, Krishna Rukmini Satyabham. Then there is uh, we greet the deities, then again there is more darshan, and then uh, there is uh, Prabhupada's Guru Puja, and then we come down here singing Jai Radha Madhava, and then class for 45 minutes, an hour. 
all of these things Prabhupada himself taught in exact detail. There, no, there is no need to change anything Prabhupada has given us in any field of devotional activity. Uh, all these uh, all these things that we're doing here, the morning program, during the daytime your various services, taking care of the deities, pre- preparing offerings for them, making the offerings, the way you're singing, dancing, then uh, dressing the deities, deity worship, cleaning the temples, doing so many de- uh, duties, uh, going out and... Uh, connecting with other people, engaging them in devotional service, giving them books, giving them prasadam, having programs in people's homes, your weekend programs. All these things Prabhupada has given in great detail and he continues to guide. He will not change anything but continues to guide so that we can uh, take advantage of his guidance and instructions. So, Bhagavatam class is 45 minutes to one hour and we do only one verse. And that's enough. We just follow the formula that Prabhupada has given and our life can be perfect. Absolutely perfect. There's no reason to be dissatisfied or disturbed or agitated or worried or concerned or in anxiety. There's nothing at all, not even one iota of dissatisfaction or anxiety should be there in the lives of one who is strictly following. Anxiety, dissatisfaction, discontent is only there when we deviate. No matter what our situation is, whether we are brahmacharis or grihasthas or new members here or we've been here for some time or we have a female bodies or male bodies uh, or we are young or old or whatever our service is, nobody should feel any disturbance or dissatisfaction at all if we are just following Prabhupada's simple program. And if there is some disturbance or dissatisfaction or anxiety, then we should immediately check to see not what is wrong with the program but what is wrong with what we are doing. Something we are doing that is off course, that is bringing the anxiety. Something we are doing, we have to examine, like Purikshit, carefully. What am I doing that is causing the disturbance? And I can guarantee you that if you do that, you will get the answer. If you examine within yourself and consult with other devotees, you will get the answer to find out what it is that is creating some disturbance. So in this case, uh, Diti, she deviated, as we read, hmm? she deviated from the instructions given uh, or the desires of her great husband. Of course, there's Leela here, uh, but she deviated. She did something that was against the principles of dharma or authorized religious activity. Hmm? Therefore, what happened? Hmm? What happened? A disturbance was created. And what kind of a disturbance? Two great demons took birth. Hmm? So, she created a disturbance with a very great personality, Kashyapa Muni. And, and, and therefore, the disturbance was so significant that two demons were born. Hmm? So, do you think that she was in anxiety when two demons were born? Her whole life was full of anxiety. Right till the point of uh, the demon's death. So whole life can be full of anxiety if the deviation is very big, if the offense is very big, if the disturbance to Krishna or his pure devotees or Krishna's plan or his instructions is very big, then the whole life can be full of trouble. So we are seeing that example over here, whole life full of trouble, whole life full of disturbance. Uh, but because her husband Kashyapa Muni was a great devotee, great says there was one benediction, hmm, that both the demons would be killed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
So some adjustment was made. So like that also in our case, we may make big mistakes and we may create big disturbance, but then there are ways to compensate. There are ways to correct the uh, disturbance and that also should be recognized, especially in this age, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come, we observed Gaur Purnima yesterday. Uh, uh, Mahaprabhu is a very, that incarnation and especially not Nityananda, very forgiving personalities. So even if you make mistakes, and we will make mistakes, the correction is very uh, easily done and the forgiveness is very easily obtained. And you will find that amongst Vaishnavas also, that uh, the Vaishnavas are very forgiving. Hmm? Krishna, in his Swaroop, Krishna, he, as we know the uh, story of the Rasa Muni and Maharaj Amrish, Krishna, he doesn't like to forgive. He says, you want forgiveness? Sorry, I cannot do. The Rasa Muni, you have to go ask from Amrish Maharaj. But Amrish Maharaj is waiting, thinking, Durvasa Muni has not committed any, any offense. I have done something wrong. Why? Heart of a Vaishnava. Hmm. Although Durvasa Muni has committed, committed the fault, Amrish Maharaj is thinking, he has not committed fault. I have committed fault. I must fast. I must fast for one year. Hmm? Until uh, I can rectify this situation. Uh, so then Durvasa Muni, we know the past time, he's going all over, so Rashtan Chakra is chasing him and he's in great fear and finally he goes to Maharaj Ambarish and uh, he asks for forgiveness and Maharaj Ambarish is thinking, you haven't done anything, but okay, you know, uh, that let me, let, let this matter be settled, he immediately forgives. So Vaishnavas are very forgiving and you may find that even in it may not be your situation, but maybe some god brother or god sister, they have committed some mistake, some offense, and there has been some disturbance. Nothing like this. You know, I don't think any of us will give birth to Hiranaksha and Hiranakshipur. Anybody thinks they're capable of doing that? Anybody thinks they can be father to Hiranaksha and Hiranakashipur? No. So, you know, we're not so, so powerful. <laughs> So, but mistakes will be made and uh, offenses, uh, unfortunately, will be committed. So, what can we do? If we have made the mistake offense, then immediately we should find out how to rectify it. Hmm? And it will be very easily corrected because Vaishnava is very forgiving. This is the era of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But one must have the courage to admit and recognize the mistake and fault. One must have the courage and must have the courage to ask for correction, forgiveness. Now, it's very easy to do. Don't keep it within yourself. Don't think this is such a big problem that I, that, uh, you know, I'm going to not be able to deal with it or just go, don't keep thinking about it, thinking about it, fest, letting it fester and gets worse and worse and worse. Uh, just if there's some mistake, then even in the uh, outside this world of, of what Prabhupada has given us, even in the world outside they recognize that the, if, if some mistake has been made, then the most important thing to do is apologize. Hmm? They teach this in management courses, leadership courses. The most important thing to do is to apologize. And how long should you wait before you apologize? How, what do you think they say? They teach this in leadership courses, in, in big, big institutions. They say that the apology, apology should be given immediately or as soon as possible. So this is in your case. Now, if some, some other, somebody else that you know, if they have committed some mistake, some offense, then, and if they're having trouble to admit that mistake and to rectify it, by approaching the people that are involved, then you should help them. You should, you should make it your, uh, your responsibility to help them come to the point where they can admit their mistake, recognize it, and then rectify it with the other people involved. 
That's a very important and big service. Don't ignore it. Hmm? Because it, you all worked so hard to keep yourself in devotion service and bring other people into devotion service. So if somebody has made some mistake and they are about to leave because of that mistake or that offense, then do what needs to be done to keep them, to bring them back in and give them a safe situation. So these are some of the things that uh, we can learn just from this situation about Diti, the mistake that she made, she remembered it, she was given some benediction by Kashpa Muni uh, that the uh, sons would be killed by the Lord and Prabhupada makes the point uh, about the same source can give auspiciousness and inauspiciousness which is milk in this case is auspicious but blood is inauspicious so both things are coming from the same source hmm? so uh, in this case over here the, the points I've been trying to present uh, the uh, the mercy comes from the Vaishnavas and Srila Prabhupada and when we make mistakes then the forgiveness also comes from them so the same source can always give us the protection that we need. We don't need to go anywhere else. Hmm? So when things are going smoothly, we're taking shelter of the Vaishnavas. And when we make some mistakes, then what? We take shelter of the Vaishnavas again. Same source. Hmm? Everything can be obtained from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his representatives, Srila Prabhupada, and Srila Prabhupada's movement that has been set up. Everything that we want can be obtained. And this applies to men, to women, to again to younger devotees, uh, uh, older devotees, grihasthas, brahmacharis. Everybody can take shelter and they should feel protection, uh, uh, com complete protection by connecting and taking shelter of Srila Prabhupada's mission. So there's many ladies in the back also today and this verse is about uh, Diti and her feelings, her behavior, uh, what happened in her situation. So I wanted to focus the questions and comments to the ladies because this is about, you know, although we're in the material world and these bodies are temporary, still it is about ladies. So please take some microphone. Is a microphone there? And see if they have questions or... Any comments from any of the ladies in the back? Raise your hands, please, if somebody would like to say something or make some comment. Yes? One more chance. You can, some of the ladies can make some comment. Don't feel that this is wrong thing to do. We can all learn from your comments, your realizations also. No? Okay. <laughs> I tried. Any of the uh, other devotees would like to ask any questions or make comments? Prabhu, yes. that uh, Chota Haridas Thakur was abandoned by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes. And uh, it appears that he was very strict with uh, Haridas Thakur. Yes. So, when we commit mistakes, uh, how do, I mean, how can we think that we easily can forgive us? Not able to, not able to hear. Maybe you can come nearby. Can you yeah. come here? No. Generally, we devotees also may commit mistakes. Yes. So, does Mahaprabhu, I mean, how, do, how does he accept the devotees? He forgives them or... Uh, Mahaprabhu is being represented by Srila Prabhupada now. Srila Prabhupada is, is his uh, commander general. So, uh, uh, Mahaprabhu, yes, he is very strict with uh, his sannyasis. Uh, and he showed that example, that example was give, given to show how strict one has to be and how careful one has to be. Uh, but now, 500 years later, Srila Prabhupada has uh, applied 
Mahaprabhu's direction and teaching and he's directed by Mahaprabhu all the time. So he has created our society and our society is run in a certain way. So, uh, by Prabhupada's teachings, therefore we must be, become very familiar with his teachings and uh, not only Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita and the Chaitanya Charitamrita is very helpful because you will see other examples there also of how to deal with devotees who make mistakes. Very good examples. And then if you read Prabhupada's uh, conversation books, 37 volumes, you will understand a lot about how Prabhupada dealt with devotees who were having trouble. So it's, it's, very import, it's very important for those of us who are in positions of leadership to read and study Prabhupada's teachings and then always to pray to him for guidance. He will always give us guidance too. Uh, now one thing about sannyas is that in ISKCON that actually in 1977 February two times Prabhupada said if you read his conversation books two times he said no more sannyasis hmm? no more and he gave a reason why because in Kali Yuga sannyas is forbidden anyway uh, but in Prabhupada's case Bhaktisthanda's case there were special exemptions exceptions made and Prabhupada also on the uh, you, know, you know in the earlier parts of his mission he uh, he gave some sannyasis people wanted but in 1977 he said no more no more sannyasis so keep that in mind also but everything that uh, is needed the main point is everything that is needed for us to feel sheltered as brahmacharis, as grihasthas, as ladies, as children, as old people, everything is there within Prabhupada's arrangement. And we must always find solutions within Prabhupada's arrangement. And the solutions are there. Uh, Prabhu, this, uh, uh, like, uh, the, for a living entity in the Bhagavad Gita, I was reading the third chapter, that uh, uh, lauding our tendency and uh, sense enjoyment are the enemies of the uh, living entity. Mm. So we know that sense enjoyment is very, you know, it's not favorable for a devotee. So sometimes uh, when the sense, ha- when the sense objects are there right in front of us and the opportunity is there, then the senses may get agitated. I mean to say, when the sense, we keep away from the sense objects, it's yeah. easy to give up sense gratification. When the object and the opportunity is there, Yes. So, devotees may you know, find it difficult. So, how do you, uh, uh, you know, also, can you give your opinion on that? Uh, I heard only half your question. Somehow, yeah. it was, can you repeat to me? Uh, this, I am talking about sense, uh, sense enjoyment. Sense enjoyment. Uh, when a devotee is, uh, is away from the sense objects, yeah. It is easy for him to give up the sense gratification. Okay. Yes. When the objects are there, so it's very difficult to give up the sense gratification. Right. So, would you kindly give your opinion on this? Okay. So he's the, he's saying that the when the objects of sense gratification are there, uh, then difficulties can come, and when the objects of sense gratification are not there, then it's easy to give up sense gratification. And yes, we know sense gratification is what causes disturbance hmm? because the senses are not meant to be engaged in disturbing activities which is enjoying the senses for personal pleasure. They are meant to be engaged in the service of Krishna. Then the senses are satisfied and they become spiritualized. So again, in the atmosphere of a temple like this, in every house for... uh, for householders should be like a temple. Every grihastha house should be like a temple. Because everything is ashram. Grihastha ashram. Ashram means you should have the same atmosphere there as, you, as the temple has over here. What does that mean? Gornitai Diris, morning program, evening program, only Krishna Prasadam. During, during the day people are doing the deities, uh, uh, duties. Uh, always chanting is going on. Prabhupada chanting, Prabhupada's tapes, like here, uh, always any a spare moment, uh, even in the grihasthas, one should be chanting or studying Prabhupada's books. Uh, 
So the whole Grihastha ashram can be spiritualized and become free of objects of sense gratification. And in the temple that attempt is made by the leaders anyway. So the key to avoid uh, uh, succumbing to disturbing activities, which is sense enjoyment, is to uh, make one's environment free from the objects that cause sense gratification. Hmm? Therefore, we don't have televisions, you know, running all the time in your ashrams. You don't have televisions, right? So, so you don't have televisions, you're not, uh, you don't uh, go every Saturday to movies, right? You don't read all kinds of novels and things that, that can cause disturbance. You're not keeping any uh, books or, you know, any types of food that is not Krishna Prashadam hiding somewhere. Um, you know, nobody's keeping any alcohol bottle on the, on the top it says, um, Ganga Jal, but something else is inside, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so, uh, so like that, you're, you're uh, keeping things in a way that there's no disturbance. So again, the Grihasthas can do the same thing. So again, Prabhupada has given us all the arrangements. He's not left anything out. You won't find this kind of perfect arrangement anywhere else on this planet. Anywhere else. No matter what they claim, if you actually go spend, spend some time in anybody else's environment, in India or outside India, there's nothing that compares even remotely to what Srila Prabhupada has put together. Therefore, he is Jagat Guru. Hmm? Therefore, there is no, we say there is no other Guru. There's only one representative of God. Hmm? So, uh, we, can, we can say with confidence and without being proud, Prabhupada is the only way. Prabhupada is the only way. There is no other way. Hmm? So, uh, those are some comments. Okay. Yes. Within the temple we are protected actually. Yeah. The moment we step out and do some service, then there is a chance of having a little Yeah, well, true. When we go out to do some service, as soon as you go out, yes, it's there. But if you maintain the uh, strict routine, that Prabhupada has given us in the ashrams, Vyasa ashram or in the temple ashrams. Morning program is very important. All these little, little details that Prabhupada has given, all extremely important. If you do that, then when we go out, then that disturbance will not be there because you're going out on Krishna's business and you always have your mala, you always have some... Uh, nowadays you have, you know, uh, MP3s and all the lectures are there, Kirtan's bhajans, you have Krishna Prashadam with you, you have Prabhupada's books. So, so many ways to remain protected nowadays. And uh, always take advice of other devotees who've, who have more experience, you know. Yes. Same Chaitanya Mahaprabhu forgive another devotee who went behind the gypsies. So personally, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu protected. Here one side he chastised right. Haridas Thakur, here other, other side he protected. One, one place he want to show that how you have to be very strict. Yes. Another place his own compassion, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Namo Mahavadanyaya yeah. aspect he has shown. Yes. And in the same Chaitanya Charitamrita, um, Sarbama Mubatacharya says about this uh, sense object and things, uh, when uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, you continually engage in devotional service by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. By the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, spiritual senses will awaken hmm. and material senses pleasure will be covered. Covered over. Covered. So he says, this side is covered, hmm. so you will not get pleasure from material things because it's covered. And awakens the spiritual senses. So, so that is the best way of uh, so material, permanent solution for the... So material sense is the switch gets turned off. Yeah. 
and the yes, spiritual yes. senses gets yes, awakened. Yes. Yeah. For that, two things: one, you have to engage devotional service and depend on mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. By mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, two, these two things happen. Very good. Thank you. Very nice. Yes. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hmm. Sometime back, uh, uh, we had come across a conversation where I think it was the case of uh, Vishnu Jan Maharaj that uh, in his context somebody asked that uh, if a uh, sannyasi falls down, like in case uh, it was during Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time, uh, should he commit suicide? So, because in uh, Chota Haridas, uh, his case, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu approved it. He said it is good what he did. Then, um, uh, in that morning walk uh, conversation, Prabhupada says, uh, uh, I can't be so strict like uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he was, he said that it, uh, if if such a thing happens, then he should get back. And I'm not I'm not remembering exact words, but then he said uh, he didn't he, he didn't endorse the same uh, strictness towards uh, uh, the fall downs that a devotee may right. have. So I thought of sharing this. Right, I think this Prabhu was giving that other side, and you also confirmed that. And actually in this 1977 conversation where Prabhupada says no more sannyas, so actually he says that those sannyasis that are agitated, they should get married. He said there's nothing wrong. They should get married and continue in their devotional service. So he's actually giving that kind of recommendation to all the people who are at that time who were sannyasis but are having trouble. And uh, exactly what you're saying, he didn't want them to just become discouraged and leave or start cheating. He said, no, be honest, you know, take household life and continue. So, diff- yes, uh, uh, he, different type of uh, arrangement than in uh, uh, Sota Das Thakur. Okay, we'll stop now. Shila Prabhupada ki jai.